Welcome to Politicus, the only podcast that discusses politics and public service from the Portuguese American perspective. Here we discuss everything from federal policy, local issues, and U.S. Portugal relations with the goal of driving more discussion and awareness of the issues affecting our nation, our community, and what we as Portuguese Americans can do about it. And now, Politicus. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Politicus. I'm Angela Samoz, and we have Denise Borges here. We are both directors with Palkus. Hi, Denise. How are you? Hello. How are you doing? Great. It's fantastic. Another exciting Good. episode. We're excited about this one. Yeah, uh, we have a very special guest today. We have Professor Vasco Ratu, who is president of FLAD. And for those of you who are not familiar with, with FLAD, it stands for Fundação Luso-Americano para Desenvolvimento, or Luso-American Development Foundation in English. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with FLAD. It's an organization that supports a lot of different initiatives and organizations here in the United States, uh, Portuguese American um, initiatives and organizations. So uh, welcome, Professor Ratu. Well, thank you. It's very, uh, very uh, excited to, to participate in this, uh, in this forum. Yeah, we, uh, it's a first of its kind. So we're hoping to chart new territory here and uh, explore lots of new themes and, and even tackle some difficult topics, if you will. So, but for this discussion, why don't we just kick it off with, if you could give our listeners a, a bit of a synopsis of FLAD and, and what the organization does. Well, sure, I'll be glad to. But uh, first of all, let me congratulate Palkus on uh, this initiative. I think it's a, uh, another uh, terrific step in promoting cooperation between Portugal and the United States uh, and the communities. And I hope uh, you put a lot of pressure on me now, since this is the first, uh, <laughs> the first episode. <laughs> Let me tell you a little something about FLAT. As uh, most of the um, audience would probably know, uh, the foundation has been um, running for over 30 years. Um, its essential mission is to contribute to the development of a good relationship between the United States and Portugal. Uh, it's not a government organization. It's a private organization. So we set our own agenda. We allocate resources. Uh, we define priorities. But it works closely. The foundation works very closely with the uh, Portuguese government here in Lisbon, as well as with the American authorities at the American embassy here in Lisbon. So although not a government organization, we do work very closely with the government, as well as the uh, regional government in the Azores. The foundation was uh, established uh, as a result of a treaty, actually, between the uh, Portuguese and the American government. And it's... Um, its purpose is to be a, a, a flexible, uh, very flexible instrument in the development of the relationship of, uh, between Portugal and the United States. And so, therefore, we uh, promote a lot of initiatives in Portugal about the United States. We bring a lot of people from the United States to Portugal, and we do the reverse as well. In other words, we promote a lot of initiatives um, in the United States about Portugal, about the communities, and we fund a lot of projects. Um, and this is essentially what we do and what we have been doing for the last 30 years. And I, um, I think it's a, a terrific organization. I'm very proud of the work we've uh, been doing, and there's a lot more to be done. Professor Hashku, uh, building upon that, I know that uh, one of your specialties as a academic has been in the, bio, the relationship, the transatlantic relationship between the United States and Europe. And thus fittingly, you are president of, of FLAD, one of the presidents of FLAD with the uh, extensive uh, background in the, the, this uh, relationship that can have its ups and downs, its complexities, is any relationship between any nations, but in this case, even a block of nations as the European Union and the US. And so, uh, if we could take just a couple of minutes to basically talk a little bit about uh, how you see in this period of, uh, of time our relationship between the United States and uh, Europe and how important this uh, transatlantic relationship has been and, of course, the role of, that Portugal has played in this. All right. Well, in relation to Portugal, the relationship with the United States is, um, is quite robust. It's uh, been very strong over uh, centuries, as a matter of fact. And so the relationship does have, once in a while, a minor hiccup, I would say, but essentially the relationship is very strong and it uh, has survived 
governments, they have survived regimes, and the the fact that so many Portuguese Americans uh, live in the United States contribute actively to uh, American society, I think, is um, uh, tremendous for the uh, for the relationship for the consolidation of the relationship. So I, I see no uh, no major problems. Uh, there are, uh, as it is known, there are some disagreements between the two sides, but I think that's quite normal. With Europe, um, the relationship, at least since the Second World War, has been a very close relationship, a strategic relationship. Again, it's been marked periodically by disagreements. Um, certainly, we, we all recall the disagreements in, in relation to the, um, to the war in, in Iraq, for example. But again, these are disagreements within a family rather than profound uh, strategic political uh, disagreements between adversaries. So the relationship is characterized by uh, overall uh, a friendly, uh, robust relationship, although, of course, uh, at times there are disagreements. I think uh, at this, uh, this moment in history, it's also widely known that uh, there are differences of opinion on both sides in relation to uh, the climate treaty, for example, the most recent. Um, but on the whole, I think, again, there is more that unites us than divides us. The relationship uh, at a superior level is very important. Uh, it's very important for the United States that there is peace and prosperity in Europe, and it's very important for Europe that the United States remains in uh, as an active player uh, in European politics. Over the last couple of months, there have been uh, some... Uh, uh, some issues that uh, needed to be clarified, but I think the American side is uh, making uh, significant and positive steps to clarifying the relationship and, and reassure Europeans that the United States will continue in Europe. How important, in your opinion, and what can and how have you seen the role of Portugal uh, in this uh, transatlantic relationship uh, in the aspect of the security issue that you just mentioned? Right. Well, Portugal is actually quite important because it's um, historically it's been uh, one of the countries in Europe that's been most Atlanticist. In other words, we have a common border. It's a it's a sea border, but it's a common border with the United States, and that has been very uh, very important within NATO. Portugal is, is a founding member of NATO, and that relationship is very important to us. Um, to some European countries, uh, NATO. Uh, the United States is, is frankly not as important, but to Portugal, uh, to Great Britain, to Holland, to a number of European countries, the Atlantic re relationship is absolutely essential. And so there is absolutely no question uh, in Portugal, uh, within the major political parties, uh, about that relationship and the need to preserve it, to cherish it, and to develop it further. Over the last few years, we've also extended the Portuguese-American relationship into another new areas, such as uh, energy, cultural cooperation, educational cooperation. And I think that uh, if we look at it from a broad historical point, certainly it's, uh, it's absolutely essential for Portuguese security that we continue this relationship and that NATO continues to be an active partner. And one of the, the programs uh, I think that Vlad is just um, coming off of is the meeting of the elected officials that, where you, you bring some Portuguese-American elected officials from across the United States to Portugal to have a dialogue about these issues and many others. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what was discussed at, at, that, at that summit and, you know, kind of how that translates into your observations in general about the political involvement of the Portuguese community here in the U.S. And, you know, is, is the transatlantic relationship something that's top of mind? Do we need to do more education around the importance of that, we always, that kind of thing? Yeah, I think we always need to do education or, or uh, if you will, we always need to listen to each other. Uh, I think perhaps more than education, we, we, we need to listen and express our concerns. Uh, and, and, and to a large extent, that is the objective of the um, of the initiative, uh, it's uh, we just uh, held the uh, third annual um, right. summit of Portuguese and American political leaders. Basically, what we do is the following: we bring to Portugal, to Lisbon, Portugal, elected representatives, uh, federal as well as state level, and we put them in touch with Portuguese members of the opposition as well as the Portuguese uh, parliament, as well as government ministers, 
in this latest uh, round, we had the President of the Republic speak to the American delegation, as well as uh, former President uh, George Sampaio. So the idea is very simple. It's to have political, the Luso-American political delegates uh, meet with representatives of the Portuguese political society. And we discuss various uh, various themes, not only uh, security issues like NATO, like Europe, uh, but also economic development, educational exchange. This year we had uh, a panel, for example, on local government, experiences of local government with the mayor of Porto, for example. But the idea fundamentally is to have both sides uh, have a greater insight as to what uh, is on the mind of side and how we could go forth together and develop an agenda that is mutually beneficial. In that realm of the uh, uh, legislative dialogues, um, and uh, one of the topics uh, that was discussed, as it was uh, promoted also by by your, the FLAD, has to do with the involvement of the Portuguese American community in the political process in the United States of America. Sometimes we have not been as active as we should, and uh, FLAD certainly has done its share of uh, promoting different initiatives uh, throughout the various years. But especially in the last uh, uh, few years that you have been president of FLAD, you've concentrated immensely on having uh, Portuguese Americans participate in the political process. So the community has a voice, which is something that's very dear to Palkis as well. How do you, and I know you've uh, visited and you've not uh, uh, and you have had extensive talks with various community leaders on both sides uh, of, of uh, both coasts, on the West Coast and the East Coast of the United States uh, and throughout. And uh, in your observations in the last few years of this involvement in the Portuguese American community within the mainstream political census, how have you seen that? And uh, what, uh, in your mind, is important for the Portuguese American community to come forth and have a much more important voice? Hmm. Uh, that's, a, that's a very interesting question. I, I actually lived also in uh, for an extended period uh, in both Canada and the United States, and during that um, that period of my life, I also was very uh, very aware of these issues, and I, th I think that experience, to a large extent, convinced me that. But it, it was it was natural that recent uh, immigrant communities don't participate as much as uh, mm -hmm. as is desirable. But also the Portuguese uh, communities have gotten to the point where they now need to participate. They need to participate, I think, for various reasons. Uh, for one is uh, the first one is that participation is absolutely essential if the interests of the community, the local interests of the community, are to be uh, are to be met. So it's, it's, it's uh, if you allow me to put it this way, it's in the, the interest of the community to participate and get involved in school boards and uh, local councils and so forth. When we talk about political participation, we often think of the federal level, but not necessarily. It's, it's also the other levels are, are also absolutely uh, essential. But uh, from a Portuguese perspective, it's also very important that our community uh, integrate and that they have weight, that they have political weight, and they can make political demands. It's, it's a form of advancing the community. It's a form of advancing opportunities for the community. But it's also a form of allowing us, from our side, of then uh, having more authority, let's say, let's put it in that, that sense, more authority to also demand other things that may benefit the community. So I think it's important for Portugal, it's important for the community, I think it's important also for the United States that uh, American society can also um, benefit tremendously from the input of a, a Portuguese community that is more assertive, more integrated, uh, that places a greater value in education, uh, economic advancement. I think these things are all very important uh, uh, for for these reasons. Yeah, I, I, I obviously totally agree. And I think that one of the things that you touched upon is very important, uh, this last point where you mentioned that the Portuguese-American involvement or Americans of Portuguese ancestries, we might want to call them, uh, of all generations, um, first, second, third, fourth generations even, uh, get involved in the political process, because I think we do bring, and I know you know both sides well, and I'm glad you mentioned that you had this 
wonderful experience of living both in the United States and Canada for since amount of time, and and your contacts uh, with with both sides of uh, uh, both coasts in the United States are are very important. And uh, as an academic, obviously, you have put a lot of thought into this. Uh, the uh, what you mentioned, I believe, is important also for the U.S. Uh, for Portugal, for Portuguese Americans to have this uh, voice because we kind of give a unique perspective of a European voice, don't you not think? I mean, uh, the Portuguese have always had an Atlantic outreach more than sometimes other European nations. Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, in that sense, we're very similar, as I said before, to uh, Holland and to Great Britain, but very different than France or Lithuania or Poland. So I think it's it's essential that this voice be uh, clearly articulated. But let me also say something that that I think is also very important. Uh, I don't think it's a secret. I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that there were a lot of misperceptions uh, about the community in Portugal. To a large extent, Portugal sort of lost touch with what was happening in the community, and a lot of stereotypes were stereotypes remained over the last 20 or 30 years. One of the things I've tried to do over the last couple of years is to, uh, is to combat those stereotypes. I'll just give you an example. We've actually sent uh, newspaper reporters and television reporters to the United States to do stories on success stories, people that have been very successful in various areas, business, education, and so forth in the United States. And uh, these um, these reports have uh, now appeared in the Portuguese press, and they they've been amply disseminated. And I I, I think the reaction has has been very interesting because um, uh, people say, well, people come to me and they say, well, I didn't know that there were these kinds of success stories in the United States. So I I, I think one of the things we we have to do actively is to combat the stereotype about the communities in Portugal, but also combat the stereotypes about Portugal in the communities. To many yeah. people in the community, yeah. Portugal is still an underdevelopment, almost third world country. That is not the case. Portugal is very modern. It has, uh, obviously, its, its, its problems. We know some of the uh, uh, problems, the economic and financial problems for the last few years. But, but it also has a lot of... Uh, development, a lot of potential, a lot of very qualified people that sometimes the community doesn't appreciate and it still thinks of Portugal as the country where their parents or grandparents left 30 or 40 years ago. So I, I, I think on at this level, we also have uh, a challenge before us uh, that is to make the community more aware of contemporary Portugal and to make Portugal more aware of the wonderful things, uh, the wonderful advancements that have been made by the community. Uh, I think it's a great point that you bring up because I personally have encountered that in speaking with people here who maybe have not been to Portugal ever, right, if they were born here, uh, or if they immigrated 30 or 40 years ago, they haven't been back. And so just as you said, they have this idea that, you know, they're still washing clothes with the with the washboards or something like that. And, you know, with um, just a couple of examples where, you know, there's an immense technical talent that's coming out of Portugal and scientific talent. And, and every time I go, you know, there's an infrastructure system or even something as simple as the shopping carts at the grocery store that I always say, God, I wish we had this at, in the United States. This makes so much sense and makes it so much easier. So there are actually a lot of advancements there that we don't have here. You know, for example, the first time I ever did Wi-Fi in the car while I was traveling was in Portugal. And that was about five years before it got uh, to the United States. And uh, well, so yeah, I mean, that's clearly yeah. one of the areas uh, when I'm in the United States, I'm always surprised how uh, how bad the Wi-Fi is in comparison <laughs> to Portugal. Portugal at that level is very advanced. But there are other things. Uh, some of the technology used in the highways, for example, easy pass and that sort of thing, that was widely available in Portugal before, well, before it was available here. in the United yep. States. Some yep. of that technology was actually exported to the United States. Uh, for example, one of our companies, uh, EDP Renovaveis, that does work on uh, renewable energy, is one of the biggest uh, uh, companies in the United States in the field of renewable energies. And so th those sorts of stories also are not often mentioned in the community. And that's a shame because, in fact, uh, th there's a lot of uh, good things that have happened over the last few years. Yeah, no, that's a great point. The other thing I wanted to mention is just going back to when you talked about 
Portuguese here, you know, uh, working together to have a voice and demanding things. One of, you know, one of my favorite examples is the Santa Clara Forum. And, you know, the community there gathered around a, a very simple issue, which was they wanted RTP on their cable network. And, you know, it wasn't offered. And so they banded together and did the letter writing campaign and visited their local officials. And they were able to get RTP. But then beyond that, the Santa Clara Forum was formed. And now every year they actually have a candidates night. And I know there are candidates night that exist in other communities, but this is one of my favorite examples. Uh, you know, now the, the local city council, if you're going to run for city council, you have to go to the Santa Clara Forum and answer questions from the Portuguese community. So the community there has really demanded the attention of the local elected officials there. And I think it's a great example and something that can be yeah. fairly easily replicated in communities throughout the country. Yeah, I think that's the way forth. Um, I mean, I, I think it's fine. I'm, I'm very comfortable with the fact that people uh, are very proud of the fact that they're from the Azores, that they speak, or uh, wherever they're from, or from the continent, or from Lisbon, or wherever they're from. But, I mean, we do have a common interest. We do have a common identity. And irrespective of the uh, local differences that are important and are, are worthwhile to preserve, uh, I think it's also important that we concentrate not on what makes us different from each other as Portuguese or Portuguese Americans, but also on uh, what holds us together. And I think the uh, the language, the common culture, all of these things are very important. And if they could um, uh, if if they could be articulated politically, this is a, a tremendous step both for uh, Portugal, for the Azores, but also for the community itself. Right. That's a great point. Exactly. Uh, could, couldn't have said it better. <laughs> I was a really, really well. I'm sure you could have. I'm sure you could have. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we're, we're coming close to our time. And at the end of each of our podcasts, we like to ask our guests if they could either give a piece of advice or a call to action to our listeners. So I'm going to be a little bit more guiding in this one instead of leaving it open ended. But give our listeners a you know, call to action on, on how they can be a voice for Portugal in their cities and states, and not only Portugal, but for Portuguese Americans. Well, I would say, I would say that well, I'm not really a person to give advice, but I would say that uh, be proud that you're Portuguese. Um, Portugal is a, is a wonderful country. Uh, it's a, it's a, as I said, it's a modern country. It has a wonderful history, wonderful traditions. Portuguese is spoken all over the world. It's spoken on many uh, continents. We have a lot of things to be proud of, and not just Ronaldo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he's a good one. Portugal. Well, he is, but he, there's more to <laughs> Portugal than Ronaldo in football, and so we should be proud of, the, of these things that make us Portuguese. And being proud of the fact that you're Portuguese doesn't make you any less proud of being uh, uh, American or Canadian or whatever it is. Uh, it's just an added dimension. So if you can tap into this Portuguese heritage, it, it actually makes you better Americans, I, I, in my in my opinion. Uh, and I think in, in this sense, Palcos has a lot to contribute. I think uh, uh, Palcos has a, a tremendous agenda before us, and um, I'm, uh, I'm glad that you're uh, taking these new initiatives and, and SWAT is here to help in wherever, uh, wherever fashion we may. Well, thank you very much, and we are so very proud of, of what uh, all the work uh, that, whether it be related with Palkus or not, all the work that Flat has done has been really impactful. And I think that uh, I, I think that uh, that's something also that maybe I would like to see um, Palkus do, and I'm sure we will do in the future, which is also be a voice uh, for um, all the work that has been done by by, by Flat. At times, uh, folks don't know. Exactly mm -hmm. the, the the role that Flad has played uh, in the communities, as uh, Professor Vashkato has said in the last uh, thirty years, but certainly in the last couple of years uh, since Professor Vashkato has been uh, at the realm of Flad, it, uh, he has uh, taken it, uh, he's given it a, a total new vision, and has taken it into uh, a, another realm of this relationship that uh, brings the communities in, but brings the communities in through mainstream America. And I'm, as a, as a person, I'm very appreciative of that. And I think that uh, Palkus and all Portuguese American organizations uh, 
have really uh, a, a, a heartfelt thanks to give to Flat, but not just to Flat, but to you personally, Professor Vashkohatu, for this new vision and for incorporating the communities, all communities, first, second, third, fourth generation, into this uh, bond that we really need to construct. So I personally, and on behalf of Falcus uh, and Angela, obviously, I think we all want to thank mm -hmm. you for your vision Absolutely. and your leadership. Well, well thanks, Denise. That, that's overly generous on your part, I'm sure, because whatever work we do, we can only uh, we can only do it with the help and the support of people in the community. You yourself, Denise, have been a wonderful support for Flat, as well as obviously the staff here in Lisbon that works uh, very hard on these projects. So whatever Flat has done, it actually has done it in uh, arm in arm with the community and uh, community leaders. And it's not possible to work uh, in the United States without that support uh, that we have received. Uh, very generous support on both coasts as well as the Portuguese government and the American embassy. The uh, Portuguese government, through its consuls, for example, in California, Nun Matias, um, mm -hmm. but also the uh, the American embassy here in Portugal have all contributed uh, to this effort. So uh, uh, whatever FLAD has done over the last uh, few years, it, uh, it would not have been possible without the help of uh, numerous people and numerous institutions. Yeah, I, I echo the Nisha sentiments very much, and uh, I will take it one step further and just say that I, I would love to see this effort uh, or this trend of working together, you know, multiple organizations working together, translate down into the community so that we see lots of different organizations coming together to have a greater impact, whether it's having a festa or uh, throwing a fundraiser or having a, a candidate's night, anything like that. But I think... Um, everyone can agree that we are stronger in numbers and we have a stronger, we have to have stronger events and better events and better initiatives when we're working together, as opposed to each individually trying to carve out our own little niche uh, in the community. So uh, my own personal call to action, if you will, to the community here is, you know, start working together and, and join forces with other organizations. And I think that's, you know, the work that FLAT has done in, in collaboration with lots of other organizations is a great example to follow. So... So again, thank you, Professor Bashkovatu, for your... Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. And thank you for your time today with this uh, podcast. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. And best, uh, best wishes uh, for Palkus. And I shall be uh, in September at the, uh, at the annual dinner. Looking Excellent. forward to it. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you, Denise, for being here. Uh, thanks, for, thanks to all of our listeners out there who have tuned in and stayed with us throughout this episode. If you haven't clicked subscribe, please do so now and share Politicus, share, share the, the podcast with friends and family and anyone that you think would be interested in this topic. And as always, we want to hear from you. So if you have suggestions or questions, whether it's a topic or uh, someone that you think we should interview, please let us know. At, uh, you can email us at palcus at palcus.org uh, or send us a message through social media. We're on Facebook and Twitter and and LinkedIn. So thanks again, everybody. And until next time, have a great day. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to Politicus, the official podcast of Palcus, the Portuguese American Leadership Council of the United States. Palcus is the premier national organization representing the interests of the Portuguese American community at large. To learn more about Palcus and how to become a member or to make a donation, visit www.palcus.org. To submit feedback or suggestions about the podcast, email us at palcus at palcus.org. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts and guests of the show are not endorsed by Palcus.